हेलो एवरीवन आई एम आयुषी गुप्ता फ्रॉम मुरादाबाद इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी परस्यूइंग बी टेक फाइनल ईयर फ्रॉम कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग ब्रांच हेयर इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोना प्रेजेंट माय सेमिनार टॉपिक माय टॉपिक ऑफ प्रेजेंटेशन इज ब्रेन फिंगर प्रिंटिंग इट सीम्स टू बी इंटरेस्टिंग फ्रॉम इट्स नेम नाउ वॉट इज ब्रेन फिंगर प्रिंटिंग Brain finger printing is a scientific computer based technique that is used to determine whether a particular information is stored or not in a person's brain. It means it checks whether a particular information is present or absent in a person's mind. Now comes its basic principle. How it's work? It is based on the theory that throughout any section the brain analyzes executes and records that action whenever anything happens then brain analyzes that actions executes that action it means that the particular thing is happening in front of him then it executes in its brain also and then it records that action and when the brain recognizes something then there is some changes in the neuron activity due to which there is changes in brain wave signals this thing helps at the time of testing when some incident is told to the testy then his brain recognizes that thing and then there comes some changes in the neuron activity of his brain due to which there are some changes in the brain wave signals and which helps in identifying whether a particular information is absent or present in his brain now the most important question arises how this technique works brain fingerprinting uses cognitive brain responses brain fingerprinting does not depend on the emotions of the subject nor it is affected by the emotional responses it means that the testing is independent from emotions and emotional responses during the time of testing if a person is giving some emotional responses then the testing result is not going to be affected by that brain fingerprinting is fundamentally different from the polygraph lie detector which means emotion based psychological signals such as heart rate sweating and blood pressure polygraph is a lie detection technique which works on the signals like heart rate sweating and blood pressure brain fingerprinting is something different from that technique it is not a lie detection technique it is totally different from that Also unlike polygraph testing it does not attempt to determine whether or not the subject is lying or telling the truth it is not going to tell us whether a person is lying or telling the truth it is going to check whether a particular information is present or absent in a person's mind now why we are using it what is the use of this technology conventional fingerprinting and dna match physical evidence from a crime scene with evidence on the person of the perpetrator similarly brain fingerprinting matches informational evidence from the crime scene with evidence stored in the brain conventional fingerprinting and dna matches are performed on the suspect to check whether he was there or not but brain fingerprinting checks whether the person's brain is there or not Brain fingerprints and DNA are available in only 1% of crimes. The brain is always there planning, executing and recording the suspect's action. It may be possible that a uh, the suspect is very sharp and does not leave any fingerprints and DNA available there to check out, but his brain was always there. He was planning, executing and recording the actions there. This is the main reason why to use brain fingerprint Now comes the instruments to be used in this technology. Instrumental requirements are personal computer a PC to execute the software, second a data a data acquisition board to check out the data graph and the graphs to check whether a particular information is present or absent. A graphics card for driving two monitors from one PC. We need two monitors to be attached from a one PC and a graphic card along with it a four channel EEG amplifier system and a software developed by the brain fingerprinting now comes the working of the technology there are some waves which are generated by our brain and helps in testing these are blue waves red waves and green waves 
The difference between the amplitude of these waves tells us that whether the information is present or not in a person's mind. Waves description. Red wave. Red wave, inf red wave tells us that the information the suspect is expected to know means the information that his mind should carry. Green wave tells us that the information not known to suspect means that the information not supposed to be known by the suspect. Blue, blue wave tells us the information of the crime that only the suspect could know. It means that the only person is the suspect who knows that information. If he or she knows that information, that means that he or she is the culprit. Now comes the technology. The technique uses a known fact that an electrical signal known as P300 is emitted from an individual's brain approximately 300 milliseconds after it is confronted with a stimulus of special, special significance. Means It means that our brain emits P300 signals after 300 milliseconds. Whenever we ask some questions, uh, whether it is known to us or not known to us, our brain always emits some waves. These waves are known, known as P300 and these waves are generated by after every 300 milliseconds whenever we are asked a question. Stimulus here is known as question. We can consider it as question, pictures, something to be asked. Example, a rare versus a common stimuli or a stimuli the proband is asked to count. The novel interpretation in brain fingerprinting is to look for P300 as a response to stimuli related to the crime in question. This P300 wave is considered and checked to check whether the particular information is present or absent from the person's mind. For example, a murder weapon or a victim's face. A stimuli can be a murder weapon or a victim's face. If that particular information is present in his mind, that means he is the suspect. If he knows the murder weapon or a victim's face, it means he may be the culprit. Because it is based on the EEG signal, the system does not require the testee to issue verbal responses to questions or stimuli. Later on, the maker shifted on murmur technology. Murmur technology is the advanced version of the P300 and murmur technology stands for memory and encoding related multifaceted electroencephalographic response. Now here comes the diagrams to be defined. Let's come to the figure 1. In this image, blue and red lines does not correlate with each other. That means the amplitude of the green, blue wave and the red waves are different. It shows that the suspect has not the knowledge of crime. Now comes to figure 2. In this image, blue and red lines are correlated with each other. It means that there is not so much difference in between the amplitude of blue lines and red lines. It means that the suspect has the knowledge of crime. He may be the criminal. This technology was first given by Lauren Farwell and he defined the four stages of Farewell brain technology. Brain fingerprinting, crime scene evidence collection, brain fingerprinting, brain evidence collection, brain fingerprinting, computer evidence analysis, brain fingerprinting, scientific results. Now come to the first one, brain fingerprinting, crime scene evidence collection. This is important to collect the crime scene evidence. To imagine what was happened there at the time of crime according to the evidence obtained from there. Come to the second two. Brain fingerprinting, brain evidence collection. This is important to collect the evidence from the suspect's brain means to check what information is present or absent from his mind. Now coming to the third point. Brain fingerprinting, computer evidence analysis. This is important to collect the evidence from the results obtained from the computer. Coming to fourth one, brain fingerprinting scientific results. It means to give the final result of the test. Whether the suspect is true or false. Means the suspect that is considered is the criminal or not the one. Testing. Now comes how to perform testing of this technology. The person to be tested wears a special headband with electronic sensors that measure the electroencephalography from the several locations on the scalp. This headband is used to obtain the three waves from the brain. 
green wave red wave and the blue wave in order to calibrate the brain fingerprinting system the test is presented with a series of irrelevant stimuli words and pictures and a series of relevant stimuli words and pictures the test is presented with some series of stimuli stimuli are the words evidence pictures related or unrelated to the crime scene the test subject's brain responds to these two different types of stimuli allow the testers to determine if the measured brain responses to test stimuli called probes are more similar to the relevant or irrelevant responses brain gives different responses to relevant and irrelevant stimuli and according to those responses it can be checked whether a particular information is absent or present in person's mind now coming to the applications Te coming to the one test for several forms of employment especially in dealing with sensitive military and foreign intelligence screening as military and foreign intelligence are very sensitive matter so it can be used there number 2 individuals who were information present and information absent means to simply check whether a particular information is absent or present in a person's mind once a group of 17 fbi agents and four non agents were exposed to stimuli they were having some harmful information stored in their mind which may be destructful number 4 to detect symptoms of alzheimer's disease mental depression and other forms of dementia including neurological disorders when a person is in mental depression then he or she may perform some irrelevant activities which may be dangerous and to check that these activities this thing can be used number 5 in the case of criminal cases to identify the criminals the brain fingerprinting can be used number 6 counter terrorism number 6 counter terrorism number 7 security testing now coming to the last part limitations number 1 brain fingerprinting detects information processing brain responses that reveal what information is stored in the subject's brain it does not detect how that information got there it only tells that the particular information is present or absent in a person's mind it does not deal with the strategy that how that information is got there this is the major disadvantage number 2 this technique is not 100% true in every case as it only detects information in the brain of a person it may be that an innocent person may be knowing about the crime as a third person or a listener or maybe that he may be present at the crime scene but he is not the criminal in that case this is the biggest disadvantage that it will consider that person as a criminal in fact in the case it he does not committed the crime number 3 in a case where the suspect knows everything that the investigator knows because he has been exposed to all available information in a previous trial there is no available information with which to construct prop stimuli so a test cannot be conducted means if a person is called for a test another time and there is no new stimuli probe available there and all the previous information is told him into the previous trial the in that case a test cannot be conducted thank you for watching